we are uh, today at the uh, WCTV podcast recording studios, and uh, this morning we have a special guest, Ani Peterson, who is a writer from Wilmington, Massachusetts, and uh, he has written uh, several stories, and uh, he belongs to the Wilmington Library Writers Group, which I am also a member, and uh, he has in the process of writing a uh, story, a novel um, having to do with the first mission to Mars, and so it uh, takes place in the future, and we'll have him uh, tell you a little bit about that story. Good morning, Arnie. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Good morning, Mark. That sounds great. Sounds great. A little snow this morning, but uh, I think it's only a dusting, and so we'll survive. So anyway, the uh, what I thought I would do today is uh, just talk to you a little bit about uh, your writing experience and your background. And so, um, how did you get started with uh, writing? In high school, I... Uh... We had a contest, everybody had to submit an essay, and I was one of six students out of the four years of high school chosen to be published. That's great, great. And then, did you continue to write your uh, whole career, or did you have uh, a different career that sort of uh, stopped your writing process? It, it stopped then because I went to engineering, got into engineering, and writing stopped completely. I know. Sometimes uh, the things that we love, we uh, have to put on the, put aside because uh, we need to put uh, bread on the table, and uh, the job most often takes precedent. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, it looks like you have a terrific uh, story here, and so we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, what are some of your other uh, interests right now? What do you? Uh, I, I know that you're involved with uh, hiking and camping and that you do some testing of products. What uh, What's that all about? Um, I do uh, hiking and backpacking. So um, I'm off for weekends and I spend the weekend out in the woods with a tent and sleeping bag and the testing came out of the hiking and I bid for products and if I'm picked I test them, and then I write reports, which uh, I publish on the internet through a, a website where I get my equipment from. And that sounds great, yeah. It's, it's, I've started that in 2005, so I've been doing it for a little while. That's, that's, that's super. I've read some of your uh, product uh, descriptions, and they uh, are very professionally done, and it makes me want to buy some of those items because uh, it gives a uh, good uh, description of the ins and outs of, of those uh, particular products, yes. So where are some of the places that you've been hiking? Uh, around here uh, locally? or I've hiked mainly in New Hampshire. I've done all the 48, 4,000 footers. I've hiked in the eastern part of Canada, mainly in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. Wow, yes. I, I've done some stuff in uh, Colorado and some stuff down in Florida. So that, that uh, camping and hiking experience has given you a lot of uh, information that helps you uh, as a writer because sometimes we write best what we know best and so we tend to put a lot of the information that we picked up, practical information we picked up, into our uh, characters and the stories that uh, we are uh, writing. So, uh, tell me a little bit about the story that you're uh, writing right now. This is the first Mission to Mars, and uh, what's the uh, tentative title of the book? I haven't really finalized on a title yet. Okay. Um, nothing really strikes out. Okay, yes, yes. Up until now, I called it global, but... Uh, I'm going to really, really look into that at one after I finish editing and uh, add all the uh, the final paint job, so to speak, on the on the book. Sure, uh, I've I've read uh, a lot of your uh, chapters, and uh, you've got 
uh, enough right now to make a, a novel. You've got over 50,000 words, and it's uh, very impressive, uh, broken up into chapters and uh, your characters, etc. So, <clears throat> in general, tell me, uh, what, what's the story about? How does this, where does it start? The story started in my head when I was concerned about a lot of the problems that uh, we face internationally. And I got tired of just thinking about these problems and figuring out solutions for them. So I started, I decided I'd write about it and get my ideas out. And I thought that uh, our problems now are a hundred times more complicated than they were back in the 40s. Yes. Where I've heard, you know, when I lived through the 40s. And my grandparents, of course, gave me background that extended back to the late 1800s. My God, yes. And it was a lot simpler then. So I start an introduction to my story back in the Iron Age. Okay. And... It's not, I don't have that much because it's not that important, but I think it is important in that it sets up where these people are coming from. Okay. And then the story hops to the near future mm -hmm. where we send the, um, where they send a, some robots to Mars to prepare Mars for future uh, humans landing there. Wow, yes, yes. And after 10 years, we sent a one human up. Oh, so the robots are on Mars for 10 years, and uh, so they're developing it and getting it ready. Getting it ready. They, their main function is to get some kind of growth going there, to increase the level of oxygen there and to make it uh, habitable for humans. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a great idea. So they set up a mission with actual buildings and structures and things like that, but then they also have some kind of uh, vegetation that's growing there that increases the oxygen level and also is probably a source of food too. Source of food, yes, it does. The, it com it combines both things. That's yeah. That's so the main character uh, I. A read is it goes by the name of H.R. Yes. So who is H.R.? What is he? H.R. is uh, he was born out of a wealthy family. Okay. But he became the black sheep. Mm hmm And he had to he disappeared from the family. Okay. And he uh, disowned himself from the family and family disowned him and he found his way into this community. And where is this community? This community is located somewhere in the Alps. Okay. But part of uh, Switzerland. Okay, so it's sort of uh, hidden. It's hidden. And years ago they developed an alliance with the Swiss Federation. Okay. So they're like a, a research outpost. Okay. Unofficial and... And, and who is actually launching this mission to Mars? Is it Switzerland or is yes, it? Yes, it is Switzerland. Oh, so Switzerland has the uh, all of the hardware and capabilities, and they've sent up rockets, and they have the robots that have been uh, working on Mars for ten years. Yes. So it's Swiss, essentially, it's Swiss, essentially Switzerland. Okay, and other countries have probably participated, but not as greatly. Not really, because they've developed a unique way of propulsion. Oh, And they've okay. managed to cut down uh, the weight and the cost and uh, a lot of the things. Interesting. Oh, okay. That's it. That's so super, yes. And so I, I also have uh, learned from uh, reading some of your uh, chapters here that you've introduced uh, different characters with unique names. Uh, I've come across uh, some cats that HR uh, have, and their names are Ping and Pong. Yes. <laughs> and uh, there are other characters that have these unique uh, sounding names. So what are some of the other 
characters that are in your book. And uh, like, for instance, you have uh, Snow White, so Snow and White, rather. Uh, you have uh, Fee and Foe. So those are kind of unique uh, little tongue twisters, you know, that you sort of, or not tongue twisters, but they sort of uh, roll off your tongue. Yes. Yeah, a lot of the names were derived from where they people originated from. Uh, okay. H.I. was traveling, and he saw these young boys, and he adopted them on the spot. They were... Uh, Okay. They were refugees out of it, an Asian country. Interesting. And yeah. He saw a lot of potential in them, so he brought them back to the community and where they were raised. And he's uh, taken these young men and provided uh, the access for an education where they have traveled all over the world picking up uh, information at different universities, uh, uh, helping them get their education. So was that his idea to do that? or what? The, the, the community that he lives in is a very unique community. Uh, there, is no, um, there is no wealth. Nobody owns anything, but everybody owns everything. Oh, okay. So um, everybody lives in the same level, no matter if they're if they're doing cleaning, or whether they're a high-level uh, executive running things. They all enjoy the same level and quality of life. Wow! Very good. Very interesting. So uh, the young boys, Fee and Fo, are traveling the world, picking up all this information. Uh, and they're hopefully the purpose for them uh, uh, gleaning this education is to do what? Their purpose for going around was to learn more about the, uh, the terrorist groups and to learn why they exist and to try and come up with an alternate solution other than trying to wipe them off the, the planet. Okay. Because they, they realized that they represent a, a an ideal, and you can't you can't kill ideals. And they recognize that uh, there's got to be a different way of doing this. Yeah, very good. So that's their purpose here. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the humanity uh, in HR. He met a friend uh, in his travels called James, and uh, they sort of uh, <clears throat> hit it off at the very beginning uh, as uh, H.R. came back from a hiking trip. H.R. was, yeah, he's, he's coming back from a hiking <coughs> trip and he's um, sitting down with his pack and stuff and he wants to have something to eat before he gets on his, where he's going and unpacks everything and he's got a mess there and it's like this guy comes along that's, um, he's down and out but he's pride proud and he says uh hr can you spare some food well he didn't know his name but he says hey mister can you spare some food so he tells him yeah sure just help me clean up here and the guy says, i'm an expert at packing i'll pack all that stuff up and <laughs> anyway they uh they start talking and he invites him he finds out he's out of work. He was an engineer, and he says, "You know, you can. We can use you. We got robots, and we can use mechanical engineers. And uh, why don't you come and visit our village for a while, and we can check each other out." So, and the relationship uh, built up from there. That's that's uh, sounds very interesting, and and a lot of your characters are sort of uh, developed that way, where there is. Uh, a sort of a human interaction between uh, the, the two of them or many of them and uh, so uh, but that was a great way of uh, introducing the two uh, how uh, James and HR got along and uh, showing how uh, the generosity of both of them uh, have uh, developed into a uh, lifelong friendship so that was uh, that was uh, super very good. 
Um, right now, what, what do you, uh, where are you in with regard to uh, publishing your book? Are you pretty much finished, or do you have a lot more to do? The book is finished, but the way I constructed the book was, was like building a house. I put up, put up the beams. I put up the, put up the walls, and I put a roof on it. Now, I have to go back and like I develop James, uh, how they met, and there's a few more characters that may need a little bit more introduction, and more conversation added. Um, these are the putting on the touches of paint and adding the. Um, he said this and. They said that, and they ate this, and they did this type of thing. It's uh, filling in the the niches. Okay, so there's a lot more character development inside the story. Yeah, so you develop it, some more. They'll it's, develop the house. Now you're decorating the yeah, house. Yeah, going so. through, and you know there'll be things that are unanswered, and they these have to be answered. Sure, sure. These have to be answered. Uh, and if you publish your book, are you thinking about looking for a publisher, an editor, or uh, self-publishing? What, what's your uh, general idea right now? I haven't, um, having, not having published anything before, uh, it's a trial and error. It's a kind of pick the next step and then examine it and analyze it and make a decision. Yes, yeah. Well, sounds sounds good. It sounds good. So um, I think we have pretty much uh, have covered a lot of ground right now. Is there anything else that you would like to add uh, before we uh, get to the conclusion? Uh, one of the things that I'm going to need is alpha test, alpha readers. Oh yes. Yeah. And from the alpha readers, I hope to find out. If I need to answer any more questions that are unanswered, and maybe some beta readers, and at that point I'll be ready to publish. So they could contact you uh, if they were interested in reading your story and being an alpha or a beta reader. <coughs> they can go online to determine what those things are, but they basically uh, the alpha reader is just the first ones to help you with the editing and the. They How do they add anything? No, they wouldn't be editors. They would be... Um, what are they? What's the difference? The difference is, is that most people are not... They don't want to edit. Okay. <laughs> Essentially, they don't want to edit or they don't feel qualified to edit. So they'll read. They'll re read it and say, oh, you know, you did this and that, but you didn't explain this and it's unclear. Okay. Or, or what, you know, they have questions and... I have to. <coughs> I have to decide whether those questions can be answered or addressed. Okay. Because not all questions can be addressed. Sure, sure. So if they wanted to uh, be a reader like this or contact you or interested in your story, they could uh, email you. They could get to your email address. And yes. What, what is that email address? A L P. 4982 at gmail.com. That sounds great. That's good. So I'll repeat that. That's ALP4982 at gmail.com. And also, uh, I suppose, since you're a member of the Wilmington, Massachusetts, uh, Wilmington Memorial Library Writers Group, they could contact the library and uh, be in touch with you uh, through the writers group uh, that way, too. So uh, those are some of the things that uh, we wanted to cover today in uh, this interview. Um, I think that uh, we've covered co quite a lot of bases here, um, and I think that might bring us to the conclusion of this program. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, edit this uh, podcast and put it on uh, within the next month. So uh, we're basically ready to sign off. And we would like to thank uh, Arnie Peterson for uh, being a wonderful guest today uh, in the, at the Wilmington uh, WCTV uh, studios. And uh, we hope to uh, hear from him soon. 
And that's it. See you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.